All right, guys, Halifax here, back in my basement, and I got another black bubble wrapped package again. So this tells me it must come from our friendly neighborhood Trooper Trent. Inside here is his new um, holiday special control boxes. So let's open these up and check them out. Okay, so inside here, I ordered two control boxes. Now, I want to be careful because I believe there's a sticker kit involved in this too. Yep, so I just want to cut the top corner and make sure I don't cut through the actual stickers. Now, I got to actually see Trent work on these. Oh, wow, he, he lined these stickers with cardboard. That's perfect. Let's try to pull out the... Here's the stickers. Wow. Wow, he wasn't kidding how reflective that is. That's awesome. Wow. Look, you can actually see the cord in the camera. You can actually see me. All right, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back to this in a little bit. Right right atta right above attached is the black arrows. What a freaking lifesaver that is. I can't even begin to tell you the headaches I had cutting mine. Here's one control box. And here's the second. Wow. Wowzer. Wow, look at the... Everything is so well well packaged. Wow, Trent, this came out awesome. Holy crap. It's so smooth. I can't believe that printer. Okay, wow. So, Trent, um, I built a holiday special lightsaber for Trent as a joke for Christmas. I surprised him, but the control box I made for him was very, very primitive. I based mine off of um, Kurt Boy's box, and I 3D printed it, and I was going to put a little circuit card on the top, and then the week before I sent it out, we had the new picture that was released of the holiday special in the, the Duke and Archives book, and we got this kind of shape now here. So um, I, I didn't have time to make another one, and it took a month for Shapeways to send me the uh, the box that I made. So I just sent him the saber saying, I'm going to end up making another box. So when he got it, he was surprised, and he, he opened it up and started um, talking to me about what he saw. And I showed him the pictures and reference we have. And he's discovered through the shadows how it's, real, it's a really, really weird setup, um, like... Trent actually saw, first of all, Trent was the one that discovered that the box is covered in reflective tape. Because in some pictures, you can actually see uh, Hamill's flesh from his hand reflected on the box. And on another side, where the box is upside down, you can see it black. And people thought it was dirt or grime or possibly another box. But in reality, that's whatever's underneath on the floor reflecting up off that chrome. So, um... Trent was the one that found over here the tape was folded over this this bump. So he did some serious, serious um, investigation on, on this. Um, I've been very busy, so he was texting me updates, and I wasn't able to chime in right away. But at night when I get home, it's like, holy cow, you're getting so much closer, man. It's unbelievable. So um, both sides are a little bit different. And um, he's got instructions for the stickers. So in reality, I think I'm just going to sit down and do a tutorial on how to um, finish this box. Um, I want to get the same exact screws he has because he's matched it pretty damn good. And uh, I haven't had really any time to, to catch up. So... Um, yeah, what a freaking awesome job. You can totally see it. You can totally see it on there. Wow, man. Excellent job. It goes like this. Shoot, boy. Boy, oh boy. So the kit consists <coughs> of a control box, a set of arrows, one set of arrows, and a set of silver stickers. So I'm going to go check my notes before I say anything and screw it up because there's 
special instructions on where these uh, stickers go. So let me go back and check my notes. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go again. So first off, we got to get the orientation of this control box because there's a lot of funky stuff going on. Even though through the top it looks uh, the same, there is a front and there is a back. The back is completely smooth. The front has a little le ledge here. Okay, so the front is the emitter side of the lightsaber. Now if you look, there's still all these bumps from support material in here. So your best bet is to wrap the Graflex in like 120 grit sandpaper, tape it on there, so the sandpaper is facing up, so the grit side facing up, and just sand this back and forth until you have a really tight, tight fit. Because, oh, there goes the button. Because the um, it definitely has to be sanded. The support ma support material gets in the way. Trent says this smooth this sands very smooth. And I've had um, his uh, binocular kit, and again, all those reels were hit from his resin printer, and they sanded phenomenally. So throw that on there with some paper, sand until it's nice and nice tight fit. And that's step one. Step two, he recommends then taking the whole thing and buffing it with some fine sandpaper, like 220 or above. Um, so I would buff that up and then hit it with some um, filler primer. But these are so smooth, I don't think you would need filler primer. I think you can get away with just regular primer. It's that smooth. And then 20 minutes after you let the uh, primer dry, depending on your climate, because it'll probably take me about a week with the weather we have. Um, here's the kicker. We're gonna, he recommends using semi-gloss black spray paint. I know, right? We usually always use a flat black. Um, 7578 flat black, remember? Nope. It's, we want a semi-gloss black. <clears throat> Once we have it all done, it would, it's next is to put our stickers on. So <clears throat> this is where... You have to pay close attention because it can get confusing. Remember, the back is flat. The front has the ledge. So the triangles is what he recommends putting on first. This one's upside down. You take it off, you flip it upside, upside right. And the triangles you want as far down as possible so the edges match completely. Boom and boom. Next... <clears throat> well, you do both sides and the next step is the front stripe, which is This stripe right here That gets put on the front with the ledge Right here and he says that goes as far up as possible So if you look at he completed his control box already, right? so if you look at the control box it goes up to this edge The last one is the bottoms now, there is front and back. This is the back. Because this goes up the back of the Graflex here. And if you look, there's a T-track down the center of this control box. <clears throat> when you put your control box in the right orientation, there should be a T-track in the center. So this will butt up against the T-track. When I come to... when I, I'm going to actually probably going to do a tutorial on how to take one of these apart and... and and make the uh, the tongue here and everything. So in that video, I'll show putting these stickers on there so there's no confusion. But if I were to do it, to put these stickers on, I'd line this up here with this here when I fold it over. <clears throat> that way you know it's a exact. Tweezers are great for putting these on. But anyway, so the bottom one is going to go just about middle or just hugging just a little bit up here. And then once that's all said and done, me personally, when my, my time comes, I'm gonna drill and tap and mechanically screw this in just with the screws. I still have to get the screw size that uh, Trent recommends because he was fooling around with screws and his look really spot on. So I'm gonna hunt down the same screws he used and, and throw them in there. But um, what a job. Oh. And his arrows too. These arrows I cut by hand. You can see the bottom one is much wonkier than the top one. I made a, a for sale sign 
I cut cut the arrow out of the four sail sign and then traced it on some blue paper, peel it off and, and painted it. But I mean, you can see how much more professional his are. And he actually has a tutorial, if you haven't seen it already, on how to attach these, which is freaking perfect. The way he has the uh, tab cut, you peel the black outlining off so the arrows are exposed. You put some blue tape on there and you line it up and you stick it right here on the uh, the middle shutter buttons and peel it off and you're ready to rock and roll so much easier you guys don't know the headaches i had of um putting these two on there i actually made a center line with a pencil and uh was lining up the centers with it and whew, what a headache it makes it so much easier going that way but <clears throat> wicked wicked great that uh great job that trent did this for us i mean this is the most accurate thing we'll, we'll ever have uh I was with Trent, I think we, we did this maybe three nights of um, comparing um, videos and reference and uh, Photoshop uh, edits and I mean, another thing I like about debating stuff with Trent is we play off each other, like we won't go out and say what we see because we're afraid of the placebo effect, so we'll bounce ideas off of each other or hint at things and boom. Um, like, I always thought there was two rails here. You could clearly see the rails, and no, those aren't rails. Those are the top of the screws. Thankfully, we have <clears throat> a lot of blurry reference pictures, but with those blurry reference pictures from all different angles, Trent has proved the uh, the shape, and uh, there's there wasn't two control boxes used. There was one, and now with Trent's uh, model and debating with Trent and going over pictures... I personally thought there was a heat sink or something on top and it fell off. I don't believe so. I believe it's always looked like this. So um, I don't think anything fell off of it. And Trent discovering the the chrome tape on the uh, the control box freaking blew my mind. And everything made sense once once he said, dude, it's tape. Look at Hamill's reflection. Everything made sense. So you can actually see white in it too because of his tunic that he's wearing. You can see the white. But um, this is a fun, cheap little lightsaber project. I mean, you can, at the time I grabbed these, I was grabbing these for like 27 bucks a piece. I mean, you can buy them now for 40, but, and you can buy pristine ones for around 75 bucks. But I mean, 20 bucks, um, I grabbed a cheap red button off eBay. You, this part is actually inside the, the flash. When you take it apart, you unfold it and you can do some sanding and put it in there and, um, just a little bit of paint, Trent's um, control box, and I like, I personally like using Corbanth T Track. Uh, they're not accurate to the original trilogy, but you can see the graph, the, this Graphlex doesn't have original trilogy T, -T Track on it. It's really aw awkward looking, so I liked um, Corbanth's low profile grips, and I think it looks great on there. So you can really bang this um, lightsaber out real cheap. So. Um, this completes it there's no more i mean everything is doable with this except the damn control box and trent came to our rescue again so i just want to thank trent again for uh banging this out for us and very quickly he did this and realistically i i started watching him model this at like eight o'clock at night my time and then the next morning around 10 o'clock my time he's like dude check this out bang it's like, holy crap. Amazing. So yeah, so <laughs> that concludes his kit. Uh, you, whoops. You'll be able to grab one of these kits at uh, his Etsy shop. I'll link that below in the description. And uh, you can, he's got all sorts of uh, great Greedleys in there, so check out his store. And I look forward to what he has to come up with next. So uh, thanks again, Trooper Trent. Really appreciate this. You made a lot of, our, a lot of us ugly uh, saber collectors happy. Have a good one.